Hello there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV and we have our review for the Falconeer Warrior Edition for PS5, PS4 and Nintendo Switch. It's coming from the solo developer Thomas Sala, who I recently spoke with. You can find that interview linked in the description below. But for now, what about the game? Is it any good? Well, watch on and find out. The Falconeer really is a strange little game. It's set in the skies of the watery world called Ursi, and it's occupied by several factions, all vying for their slice of what little land is left. There's something deeper and darker afoot though, and the story is actually really good. It's just a shame it takes a damn long time to get anywhere interesting. Early on in the Falconeer, I struggled to connect with the story. It's very geeky, high fantasy stuff, and with faction names like Mansa Order and House Borgia, I was initially turned off. I don't like Game of Thrones, and I certainly didn't want to like Game of Air Thrones. I know I'm going to be murdered in the comments for that, but what can I say? I prefer to rewatch my favourites like Community, The Office, and 24. The Falconeer's aerial combat gameplay and unique art style kept the controller in my hand when the story failed, but only up until a point. Gameplay is really simple, because it's hard to put that much variety into an aerial combat game. You're kind of limited by what you can do in that respect, and limited the Falconeer is. Most of your time in the story is going from mission to mission, either escorting a ship through treacherous territory, retrieving an item from a lost temple, raiding an opposing faction, it's all a familiar loop, and the loop is short. For a game that's so unique and against the norm with its setting, it sticks to the familiar far too much. Something that really frustrated me was the lack of the mid-mission checkpoints, meaning that if you fail a mission, you're doing it all over again, and this was particularly annoying with the multi-part missions. You could spend a good 15 minutes playing and getting to the end of a mission, only to die and have to do it all over again. The combat isn't half bad though, and I found that it worked really well with a very simple setup. Point to your bird's cursor in the general direction of the enemy and pull the trigger. Simple and effective, if a little too ordinary. I'm flying atop a great big falcon after all, why not incorporate some of that majestic beast into the combat? I'd have liked the mounts to have had a bit more presence during combat, rather than just being a means to get around. While I can whinge and moan about this, that and the other, what I have no right to complain about is the game's world. It's stunning, and like nothing else you'll see in a game. The watery landscape is almost like a moving painting, with the waves crashing in a strange fashion, the night sky dotted with stars of unequal size, as if poked into the world at random by the artist's paintbrush. Some of my favourite moments in the Falconeer came when I wasn't on a mission, but just exploring the world a little. I'd get up high, catch a jet stream of air to propel me away from the base, and away I'd go on the search for some hideouts or temples. Just exploring, enjoying the world. I didn't get the story to begin with. I've never been a fan of the style of storytelling that the Falconeer employs. Floating heads, puking out exposition. I find it hard to concentrate and I inevitably smash the buttons on the controller to skip ahead and as I already said, it did seem a bit out of my comfort range. I was wrong! The Falconeer is as much sci-fi as it is high fantasy, and somewhere around chapter 3, the tables turned, and while I was getting frustrated with the gameplay and its repetition, the jumbled story was coming together, and I was pulled in. I'm annoyed with myself for not paying it more attention to begin with, but I reckon I will enjoy the story a lot more on a second playthrough, which the Falconeer will get from me. Partly for its gameplay, but mostly for its one-of-a-kind world. And that is the end of this review. Thank you for watching, and if you made it all the way to the end, thanks again. Why not go below, leave a comment, like, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and never miss a video. Go to the info box for our social media channels, website links, and supporters links, where you can support the team, if you can. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye-bye.